I've got $16,000, and it could be for you tomorrow. I hope you meet me right back here at the movies. Yeah, that's $16,000, all right. Good evening, I'm Karen Hart. And I'm Nolan Johannes. Tonight in the news. Plus, I'll tell you what's new with the GR Diocese problems in Lackawanna and Luzerne County. Those stories, along with Tom Clark's forecast and Tim Carlson on sports, next on Newswatch 16. Listen to Newswatch 16 on WKRZ AM 1340. Proud to serve Northeastern and Central Pennsylvania. This is WNEP 16, the news station. Now, Nolan Johannes, Karen Hart, pilot Jack Rulin in Skycam 16, Chief Meteorologist Tom Clark, and Joe Zone on sports. This is News Watch 16. What kind of a day was it? A day when the temperatures went up a little and the rain came down a lot. A day when the two most often heard sounds were the pitter-patter of raindrops and the crunch of fenders. Like here on this hill in Pittston Township where a cinder truck got caught going sideways. Good evening, I'm Nolan Johannes. And I'm Karen Hart. Luckily, no one was seriously hurt in that accident we just showed you, but it's a good example of what has been happening all around northeastern and central Pennsylvania since the freezing rain started falling early this morning. Reporter Dan Fiorucci has our lead story, the tale of a jackknifed gasoline tanker and what happened to the cinder truck and the tow truck that tried to help out. It began late in the morning when this tanker truck slid into a guardrail on Armstrong Road. The accident was caused by streets so icy that it was difficult to walk on them, much less drive. Things were so bad that even this cinder truck, which was called in to lay down gravel, got into an accident. No one was hurt. West Pitts tonight, stand by Goodwill. Within minutes, firefighters had arrived on the scene. Their main concern, the 8,000 gallons of gasoline inside the jackknife tanker. That pole can't is bad the way it's facing. Okay, that's going to be facing right at us. The nearby UPS building was evacuated. By early afternoon, Armstrong Road had been graveled down and closed off in both directions. And efforts were being made to remove the gasoline from the truck. Firemen were standing by with foam just in case. By lunchtime, firefighters from at least four separate companies had been called in, and men in heat-resistant suits were on the scene. Wreckers and a second tanker were moved into place, and the hazardous offloading operation was begun. If there would be an explosion, it could, you know, send some particles flying into the area and that, and you never know what's going to happen with that amount of fuel on that tanker. By late in the afternoon, most of the gasoline had been offloaded, and the danger had passed. And firefighters were hoping that tonight's icy weather won't bring any more road conditions like this. Dan Fiorucci, Newswatch 16, Pittston Township. The icy roads have caused accidents all over northeastern and central Pennsylvania, and one of the worst spots was on Interstate 81 in Susquehanna County. As Newswatch 16's Bob Costantini reports, there was one accident right after another. Drivers on this downhill section of northbound Interstate 81 in Lenox Township were apparently lured into a false sense of security. The road before the hill was not icy. Some drivers found out the hard way that this section of road was slick. The first accident happened when this tractor trailer loaded with motor oil skidded off the road and flipped over the median grass. Some oil and transmission fluid from the trailer can be seen now in the southbound road as the trailer is dragged. Same spot just minutes later. A van slid into another truck and that tanker flipped over. Mark Danilo, a trucker heading to New York, skidded to avoid the accident and slid off the road. The van lost control and hit into the tanker, which sent him in a spin. And I tried to avoid the whole thing and I went into a spin. And I spun and then ended up over there. 
These so-called dome covers on the top of this truck are leaking out a substance. Fire officials do believe at this point that it's paint thinner. It smells like paint thinner, but right now they're not worried. And while officials were investigating this accident in the median strip here on Interstate 81, further up the road in the northbound lane, a car and a truck spun out and blocked traffic completely. Ed Usinger of Rochester was in this car with his wife heading home. I went to slow down a little bit and uh, the car just started to skid. And I put it for it's an automatic. I put it in down into a second and I still couldn't control it. The tanker truck loaded with alcohol jackknife but was not damaged and eventually drove off. Through all of this, no one was hurt. Bob Constantini, Newswatch 16, Lenox Township. And the slippery roads almost left the city of Scranton with no salt to spread on its streets. Seems Scranton's Department of Public Works was expecting an emergency shipment of salt at this garage from a company in New York State. Only problem was the shipment couldn't get here because of the icy roads. Still, DPW officials say they have enough salt and cinders on hand for the city of Scranton until that shipment of salt finally gets here. Today's weather also left a lot of travelers stranded at the Wilkes-Barre Scranton International Airport. At least six flights in and out of Avoca were canceled when the ice was at its worst this morning. But this afternoon, planes were taking off and landing again, some of them late. All the confusion caused a rush by passengers trying to get tickets for those late flights. Even though the conditions are improving a bit, there are still problems getting around tonight. What you're looking at now is a live picture of routes 115 and 315 in Wilkesbury, where traffic is moving fairly well. But state police in Northumberland County tell us Interstate 80 East between exit 31 and 32 near Milton is closed but should reopen soon. In Pike County, Interstate 84 West between Milford and Matamoras that had been closed most of the day is now reopened along with Route 487 in Sullivan County. Interstate 80 West near the Stroudsburg exit is also now open again, but state police say there are some slippery spots out there, especially in the higher elevations. Meteorologist Tom Clark is with us now. Tom, what can we expect for tonight? Well, the freezing rain is over, Karen and Nolan, uh, for now. Uh, through the evening hours, just plain old rain uh, for the balance of uh, the evening and up through midnight tonight. Temperatures everywhere across the viewing area now well above the freezing mark. Let me show you what the temperature profile should look like overnight tonight. Now, temperatures at about 7 o'clock tonight should stand at about 38 degrees, maybe a few degrees higher than that as we head through the evening hours, and I expect plain old rain right up until midnight tonight when I expect the temperature to be about 35 degrees. But colder air coming in the latter half of tonight will drop temperatures down to below the freezing mark by 7 o'clock tomorrow morning. And I suspect there could be a period of snow here uh, just in time for the morning rush hour so roads could ice up again uh, by 6 and 7 a.m. tomorrow morning. But for now, Karen and Owen just wet in most spots, but like you mentioned, some of the higher elevations could still have some icy spots. Okay, we'll look out for them. Thank okay. you, Tom. The state health department now feels that the water is to blame for the now 63 laboratory confirmed cases of giardiasis in parts of Lackawanna and Luzerne counties. More than 100 others have symptoms of the chronic flu-like disease. Here are the communities where giardiasis has been confirmed. West Pittston, Pittston City, Forty Fort, Wyoming, Swersville, Exeter, Kingston, Duryea, Shavertown, Harding, Nanakoke, Avoca, Old Forge, and Edwardsville. Now you've probably noticed that some areas on that list are not served by Pennsylvania Gas and Water Company's Springbrook Reservoir. The health department says the people in those communities who have giardiasis drank water in one of the affected areas. This afternoon, state health department officials held a news conference. I was there when they announced that the telephone survey they've been conducting since yesterday statistically shows that water in the Springbrook Reservoir is the cause of the outbreak. That 7% of those people that are getting their water from Springbrook indicated to us on the phone that they have themselves or family members ill with symptoms compatible to giardiasis. We referred them to their family doctor. The health department says it's now up to environmental officials and Pennsylvania Gas and Water Company to do something about the water problems. And coming up, a big shakeup in Scranton. Plus, why we'll have to pay more to use a payphone. The stories when we come back. All of you, not only around holiday time, but the whole year around, slow in the bottle. Enjoy, enjoy the road. 
There has been a dramatic shakeup at the top levels of the Scranton Police Department in the last 20 hours. Late last night, Public Safety Director James Noon turned in his resignation to Mayor James McNulty. And this morning, as Frank Andrews reports, the mayor swore in a new Public Safety Director with a new mandate. This man is the new Director of Public Safety in Scranton. He is Attorney Carlin O'Malley, former U.S. Attorney in the Middle District of Pennsylvania. And that I will discharge the duties. And I will discharge the duties of my position, my position as acting director, as acting director of the Department of Public Safety. O'Malley was sworn in at City Hall to replace Captain James Noon, who resigned, saying he could no longer work effectively as the public safety director. Noon says there's been a lot of talk in the city of Scranton about the police department, talk about charges that some police officers had sex with prostitute, talk about investigations being botched, of evidence being lost, and of leaks during investigations. He says talk like that makes it tough to be the director of public safety. He was also subpoenaed to testify before a federal grand jury looking into some of those allegations. O'Malley will now head up an internal investigation into those charges, and he tells Newswatch 16 that if he has to use strong medicine, he will. Uh, if there are police officers that are guilty of misconduct, then they have to be segregated out. They have to be, uh, sanctions have to be imposed. He has a full, a free hand with me. Uh, he has full authority. I am not going to be double-checking or triple-checking what he does. But O'Malley still has one hurdle to clear before he starts his probe. He has to be approved by the city council before actually becoming Scranton's new public safety director. Frank Andrews, Newswatch 16, Scranton. There's also a battle going on in Scranton over the city's budget. It seems the mayor and the city council don't like each other's version of the budget. The dispute is over property taxes. Yesterday, the mayor vetoed council's version. City council will meet tonight to try and override the mayor's budget veto. If you get your power from Pennsylvania Power and Light, your electric bill will be a little easier on your budget beginning next month. PPNL says lower fuel costs and increased sales of its power to other utilities are the reasons for the reduced rates. The average PPNL customer will save about 81 cents a month. But if it's not one thing, it's another. In February, your local phone bill will be going up by roughly 40%. The State Public Utility Commission today granted Bell of Pennsylvania a $208 million rate increase. And take more change with you. It will now cost a quarter to make a call from a payphone, although you'll get more time when you, than you did for a dime. Bell's Wilkes-Barre oh, office manager Karen Deavy to... told Newswatch 16's yeah, action reporter Jerry Gartenberg so the that the increase is due to the January 1st breakup of Ma Bell. Monies that we would have had prior to 184 from um, long distance market and also the equipment market, uh, the local operating companies will no longer be getting. So these types of monies need to be made up. The breakup of AT&T has left a lot of us with a lot of questions. Action 16 reporter Jerry Gartenberg has the answers in a three-part series starting next Wednesday on Newswatch 16. Join us next Wednesday for the first part of Ma Bell Breakup, Will It Break You? And still ahead, the story of a man who is reaching out to touch the life of one of our, our Scrantonians, our servicemen in Beirut. But first, meteorologist Tom Clark heads out to the backyard. Tom, is it raining, sleeting, snowing, it's, or what? It's raining now, but still a lot of ice on the pavement out there, so uh, hope I stay upright. <laughs> a little bit of snow by morning, I think. I'll tell you how much when we come back. It's slip. Hey, Joe. The Environmental Protection Agency is about to begin some tests on the Springbrook Reservoir water. Newswatch 16's Dan Fiorucci is live now in West Pittston, where they're waiting for an EPA tester from Cincinnati to arrive. Dan? Nolan, this place where I am now in West Pittston is the distribution point for the PG&W water supply, which is going out, which has caused so much controversy. As you know, there have been several cases of geodiasis. Right now, we're waiting for the EPA official to arrive. He'll be coming over here and testing the water from that spigot. He's going to be looking for traces of the parasite, which has caused so much trouble, and try to confirm whether or not it is in the water distribution system here. As I say, those tests should be going on momentarily. We'll have more on the update at 11 o'clock. 
Live with the Instacam in West Pittston, I'm Dan Fiorucci. Nolan, oh. Karen? Okay, thank you, Dan. And now we're going to switch pictures and find Tom Clark out in the backyard. Mm -hmm. Hi there, Tom. Icy? Yeah. Here I am. Uh, yes, it's icy underfoot. A uh, lot, of, lot of mud and slop and slush in the backyard. If you're heading out tonight, be very, very careful walking but because there's still quite a bit of ice from all that uh, freezing rain we had this morning. Plain old rain now in the backyard and the rain gauge three quarters of an inch has fallen and it's still coming down. Let's go over to Laughlin or Laughlin and take a look at tonight's holiday house uh, and it belongs to... Okay, take a look at that there. The highways tonight wet for the most part gang, okay? That's uh, 115 and 315 in Wilkesbury and as you can see just plain old wet on the pavement there. Traffic moving along nicely. Temperature 38 in the backyard now, the humidity 92 percent, the wind west to 12, the barometer is, uh, make that a 29.52 and it's on the rise now. The range in temperature today, 38 is the current temperature, the high so far, the low last night before the clouds moved in, 15 degrees. Records 61 a year ago today, and that was nice. The record low, four below in 1960. On the Newswatch 16 color satellite photograph, there's the culprit right there, that big comma cloud. And as you know from watching uh, my weather cast, that indicates the giant storm system, a strong storm, now over western New York State, tracking up towards the north. Colder air is coming in behind it, and uh, that's why I suspect that roads could ice up again by daybreak tomorrow. Look at these powerful thunderstorms down over Florida, some wind damage down that way, and there was even a tornado watch out earlier this afternoon for portions of the southeastern U.S. 83 in Fort Lauderdale, Florida this afternoon. Now this storm is heading up. Let's go to the now cast and I can show you uh, where it's raining and where it's snowing. Here's the rain now covering all of Pennsylvania, but snow out to the west. Look at the large area of light snow now falling. Snowing now in Erie, Pennsylvania, where the cold air is now arriving, temperature near freezing. And this band of snow will track slowly to the east, and I think it will get into uh, central Pennsylvania by about 2 or 3 a.m. and in northeastern Pennsylvania, I think by 6 and 7 a.m. tomorrow with temperatures just below the freezing mark. So it's all rain now over the viewing area, but still some icy spots in some of the higher elevations. Here's the forecast for tonight. A lot of rain out there, perhaps uh, topping off at about an inch total for most places. Uh, a snow late tonight, that is after 3 a.m. in most places, so driving will be okay uh, through the evening hours tonight. Temperatures bottoming out in morning, 29 in Honesdale, 29 in Edwardsville, 27 in McAdoo, and about 27 in Lewisburg, and up there in Loyal Sock, 26 below tomorrow morning. Now, tomorrow, there will be some snow through the morning hours. Again, some icy roads, probably no more than an inch uh, in most places, perhaps two inches in the elevation. But no heavy snow coming tomorrow. There will be a very cold wind and perhaps a little sunshine in the afternoon. Look at the temperatures holding about where they're going to be tomorrow morning near the freezing mark. Temperatures dropping off into the teens and perhaps single numbers tomorrow night. Here's your health watch uh, for a Thursday. Reflex is high. Concentration should be pretty good with a clearing trend. Your mood about average. Now, the rain tonight, dense fog will linger in the elevations. And then that snow coming in, I think, uh, between about 3 and 6 a.m., a little bit of light snow tomorrow morning, an inch or two possible. Then some clearing Thursday afternoon. Tomorrow's high about 30. Temperatures dropping off, though, in the afternoon through the 20s. Friday, good. Partly sunny. Highs only about 17. Saturday, Christmas Eve, or uh, New Year's Eve day, a dry day, good weather. Roads will be dry Christmas Eve, and Sunday looks pretty good as well. Temperatures back up above freezing by Sunday. So just some rain tonight, and then a little bit of snow tomorrow morning, gang. All right. Well, we have to have another white season for New Year's, maybe, Hi. right? Why not? <laughs> Thanks, Tom. <laughs> Still ahead, I'll have the story of a special gift to a serviceman in Lebanon. Plus... Plus, Tim Carlson in for Joe's Own. He'll have a special sports love story when we come back. WNEP-TV presents another college football sports special. The Fighting Irish of Notre Dame will battle it out with Doug Flutie and the Boston College Eagles in the Liberty Bowl, live from Memphis, Tennessee. Live college football action begins tomorrow night at 8 o'clock. Notre Dame versus Boston College in the Liberty Bowl, right here on WNEP-TV 16. 
I always like a good love story, and Tim Carlson has one for us tonight. You betcha I do, Karen. The Old Forge High School girls basketball program is under unique leadership these days. A husband and wife team have carried their courtship, excuse the play on words, past marriage. <laughs> Michelle Long coaches the junior varsity girls at Old Forge and assists Barry with the varsity. Coaching together has solved several problems right away. I wanted to get in coaching and Barry decided if I got in coaching he'd never see me, so we might as well coach together. We can talk things over a lot better than if you have an assistant that you don't see at night. We find ourselves at 10, 11, 12 o'clock at night going over things, mistakes that were made at the game. But then again, there are some drawbacks. What happens when there's a little disagreement as far as coaching style goes? Well, we have some evenings where we don't talk to each other. Uh, um, we try to agree, we try to plan our practices together so we don't have the, the arguments, but there's situations that, that arise uh, where I, my opinion differs than Barry's, and we sort of work them out, though. And Barry, who's coached at Old Forge before, three years ago, was at first concerned about the coaching marriage. There might be some animosity on, on either part, you know, a little jealousy. You don't want it to set in, but it might possibly happen. So it might lead to arguments or discussions at home. But so far, things have worked out well. It's just fine. We both love the, the game of basketball, and we we are not making, everyone else is making a big deal out of a husband and wife coaching. It's just we both love the game, so we decided to try it. Uh, it has a positive effect, yeah. I think so. You may be starting a precedent here, you know. <laughs> I don't know. If we win 20 games and win the States, it might, might everybody want to do it. Let's take a quick look now at the fishing game forecast for tomorrow and see how it's going to shape up. All right, let's see where the peaks are. A good one there at 9.30 in the morning and some medium peaks there. Oh, another good one around 10 o'clock. So if you can get out there, have a good time tomorrow with the fish and game. Karen and Nolan, it's all yours. Okay, thank, thank you. you. A lot of games really? postponed today. Yep. Mm -hmm. See you on the update. Okay. <laughs> and still ahead, heading to Beirut so someone else can come home for the New Year's holiday. I'll tell you the story of a special sacrifice when we come back. Magic dolls, dancing snowflakes, visions of sugar plums. The wilkes -Barre Ballet Theater Company presents The Nutcracker. Come to the celebration with Drosselmeyer, Clara, and the Sugar Plum Fairy at the Wilkes College Center for the Performing Arts, December 26th through the 30th. For ticket information, call 824-8602. Continue a family tradition. Celebrate the holiday season at The Nutcracker. Finally tonight, the story of a man who is helping one of our servicemen in Beirut. You may remember the story of Navy Reservist Joe Walter of Scranton. He volunteered to replace a sailor in Lebanon so that man could come home for the New Year holiday. I was at the airport today when Joe left for Lebanon. He's the only local reservist to be picked from thousands of volunteers around the country, making it possible for regular Navy men aboard the USS New Jersey to get a month leave from the Beirut duty. Joe Walter waited in line today to get his ticket at a crowded Avoca airport with his wife Irene, six-month-old son Jonathan, and father-in-law Jerry Pilger. Irene hasn't changed her mind about her husband's duty. I wish he wasn't going. Yeah. I'd like him home for the holidays. Mm -hmm. and I just pray nothing happens. But Joe knows what his gift means to someone else, even though he'll never know who he's temporarily replacing. No, 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 no idea whatsoever. You think you ever will know who it is? Probably not. Mm -hmm. But I know he's going to be happy. So, an Avoca naval reservist interrupts his family holiday so that others who serve their country on active duty can get home themselves for a holiday. Very special person. Special person. The whole family is an untold story there is the father-in-law, Jerry Pilger of Moscow, who is a Navy man himself, who said, I wish that I could go in his place. Oh, and that's, wow. that's what he told me this afternoon. Nice idea. And that is our report for now. World News Tonight is next for the team. Thanks for being with us. Have a good evening. Enjoy your evening. <laughs>